This episode is brought to you by We Are Dapper Ties. We Are Dapper Ties is a company created by brothers Andrew and Julian who believe that feeling and looking great should be an affordable right for all. So whether you're wearing a suit and tie daily, heading to your first interview, an advocate for classy days, or you just like to look good, you need a dapper tie. Andrew and Julian have carefully curated beautiful designs to offer you a selection of knitted, elegant, unique, and affordable ties. Go to WeAreDapperTies.com and enter the promo code GAYSIDE to get free shipping on all your orders all over the U.S. Go to WeAreDapperTies.com. Remember, enter the promo code GAYSIDE. We Are Dapper Ties, smart, affordable fashion. And now let's get to the show. Before I get into this week's show, I just wanted to say my prayers are for everyone here in the Houston area being affected by Hurricane Harvey. Uh, Also, the rest of the Gulf Coast of Texas. Um, The flooding has been crazy. Houston did not get hit directly by the hurricane, so we didn't get all of the forceful wind and whatnot. But we are on what I think is called the dirty side of the hurricane. So we're getting a lot of the rain and the city is not really well equipped for heavy amounts of rain in a short period of time. So a lot of the freeways are underwater. And as you probably have seen on the news, there are a lot of rescues going on. So I'm okay. All of my people are okay. But my heart still does go out to all of my fellow Houstonians and anyone that is being affected by these this tragedy. Uh, I hope that things clear up by the time you guys hear this. But as it is, it's still raining. So keep praying for us, you guys. Keep us in your thoughts. And hopefully there won't be too many casualties. And we are able to bounce back after this. So now let's get into the show. You guys know this is Gay Side Stories with Trillificent, all LGBTQA all the time. So this week I have the Cry Jordan Face God himself, Side Eye Special, joining me. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Straight to the point. I like it. So let's get on. I am, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just Side Eye. I go by a bunch of shit, but... Side eye works. Yeah, you're kind of like me, like have adopted a bunch of different names and nicknames over the years in these Twitter streets. Oh no, but you, you're always going to be nigger bread to me. I remember that <laughs> one since I was in college. I don't know where all these names come from, I swear. I have a lot and, you know, different people still call me different things. So that's fine. That works. Uh, so let's go, move on into the segments. So first up, the School and Life segment my school in life for this week, which I guess I'm kind of borrowing from another week's, but you know, was uh, I had some Trill Ink time. So Trill Ink is what uh, my friends Nikki, Naj, Ariel, and Mo call call ourselves. Just a, it's a Houston thing. But last weekend I got to spend some time with them. Uh, Nikki, aka Texas Hummingbird, not to be confused with uh, Songbird, and Mo. Also, Orig underscore Glamazon on Twitter, I believe. And then Nikki's baby, who I call Nuzzin. So we all went to a restaurant for Houston Restaurant Weeks. Uh, got to have some fellowship and eat and for a good cause because they do donate a proceed. Uh, par- blah, can't talk today. A portion of the proceeds from the dinners or the meals, I should say, to the Houston Food Bank. So it was good seeing my ladies, and we were John Legend's first album, track two, the whole time. So all in all, it was a good time. And, you know, spending time with the people that I hold closest always kind of recharges me and puts me in a in a better mood. And the anticipation of getting to hang out with my friends gets me through one week, and then I can ride through that for the next week. So what about you? What's your school in life for this past week? I would say mine is, is um, just very deeply rooted in self-care. Um, just, you know, I've just been 
working a little too much and not resting enough. So just, you know, just trying, try, trying to, you know, like still little moments here and there where I can just, you know, cut out the bullshit and focus on me and what I'm trying to do for myself for a bit. So I think, you know, we, especially as black folks, do sleep on on the value of, you know, just taking a little time to take care of ourselves. Right. So, yeah. You know, like, you know, it, and it's, it shows all over the place. Like when, you know, you got PTO at work and you're not taking vacations and shit. And it's, it's just, it, it wears you down. So, you know, that's, that's, that's always going to be my thing. Just investing a little bit more into, into just taking care of myself. All right. Fair enough. And a good lesson. So we're going to move on into the come quick segment. So first, you guys know I like to do my Twitter polls. So I had a Twitter poll up for gay black men. And the question was, have you ever been on a real date? And date night with your boo does not count. I'm talking about a get to know you date. I just met you and let's see if we're compatible date. Not a we've been together for X, Y, Z. And, you know, we went to TGI Fridays and he had the mozzarella sticks. I'm not talking about that. So the answers, yes, no, and do hookups count? Because you guys know why. I don't need to explain that last one. So 89% said yes, 5% said no, and 6% said do hookups count? So I thought that was interesting because that always seems to be the, the ongoing complaint in gay culture amongst gay men is that no one wants to date. No one wants anything serious X, Y, Z. But although I guess this could be considered, we went on a date, but the nigga still didn't want anything serious. So I guess it depends on how you look at it. It is. Uh, I mean, I, I personally, I would say I'm not, it's not that I'm not interested in dating. It's just that I'm very, very, very selective about who I date. So, you know, like whenever whenever the right person comes along, then it's cool. But until then, you know, um, I got shit to do. So, you know, let's get a couple of drinks and, you know. Right. But that's what but that could still be considered a date. I'm not I'm not saying dating as in a series of seeing someone and going on outings. I mean, just a just one particular date could be a first date. It could be, you know. We hooked up on Jack and decided, you know, he not so bad. So let's go, you know, get some crepes or something. So, you know, applause for the 89 percent that have gone on a date. Uh, I'm more so in the 5 percent that has not been on anything that I would consider like a real date. And no comment on the last one. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Moving on. So you are into tarot card reading, and I wanted you to talk a little bit about that. Also, to give the listeners a little bit more uh, insight into you as a person. So why don't you tell me a little bit about that? How'd you get into it and why? Well, I think it really started. I, I had a pretty major spiritual awakening starting about a bit over a year ago, and it, it kind of made me just look at a, at, at a lot of, you know, look at a lot of things that I'm doing in my life and how it all adds up and just, you know, is this, is this the person I want to be in five, 10, 15 years? And the answer was, uh, fuck no. So I had to, you know, I had to just start throwing away a bunch of shit and getting recalibrated and, you know, realigning myself. And so down the line, I used to, I would get tarot cards and I would use them as like part of my meditation mm -hmm. so because tarot cards they you know just to the to the average eye they're they're cards with pictures and names on them but they each carry a variety of meanings so if i'm pulling cards as i meditate then it helps me get the message that i need to receive that much faster than if i'm just you know trying to receive it through other means so i did that for a while and then I was moved to start doing more with it. So I do give readings, 
and I also do tarot spreads. I do those twice a week, and I always tweet those um, under the under the hashtag uh, Red Ink Tarot. So that's all one word, of course. Mm-hmm. So and it's you know it it kind of it does me good to see that there are people who, you know, they see these things and they they're able to take something of value from it, because that's really the the thing that I, I want out of all this. I just want to, you know, if, if I can help people, you know, leave the leave the bullshit behind and live their best life, then then I, I'm I'm making it out here. That sounds awesome, and you know, snaps for the spiritual awakening because everybody ain't able. Some folks would like to. Some folks like to pull the covers right over their face. Oh yes. Oh, yes. All right. So let's move on into the main topic. So this week, you guys, we are going to be discussing pansexuality. So pansexuality is one of those sexualities that falls under the LGBTQA spectrum. Um, There's a lot of other sexualities and genders and, and things of that nature that fall somewhere in that. So the definition of pansexuality that I looked up, it says pansexuals have the capability of attraction to others, regardless of their gender identity or biological sex. A pansexual could be open to someone who is male, female, transgender, inter- intersex, or agender slash gender queer. Come on, New York. Yes. You know... <laughs> I'm so sick of this shit. <laughs> Come through New York. Police always want to be niggas at the worst time. Ha! So, starting off, uh, how do you feel about that definition? Is it pretty spot on, or or do you subscribe to something a little different? I would say when whenever somebody asks me how I see pansexuality, I always just say it as um, gender identity, sexual identity, all of that. I don't consider it criteria for if I would date someone or if I would sleep with someone. The only thing I consider, I I consider two things. Is there mutual attraction? Is there mutual availability? Because I'm not, you know, I'm not really trying to like fuck with someone who's who's married or something and now I got your husband or your wife trying to run me down because um, I gave them the, I gave them the dick the way that they couldn't. So it's Uh just like Well, come on and pat yourself on the back with that. When I see you advertisement, I see it. (laughs) <laughs> I'm here for it. I, I'm just being honest, man. Mm-hmm. But that's that's how I, I operate. Like if you know if we're both feeling each other and we can do something with it, then, then why not? It all like, sounds so simple. It it should be simple. People like to make oh, it should be. I should agree. Be, people like to make things that should be simple very very difficult, and it's, it's pretty it's pretty frustrating. I agree. So, how long have you identified as pansexual? I would say my it reached this point. It was I kind of had like three phases. Um, I would say I was straight until I was about twenty-two, mm-hmm. and I experimented a little bit, and then I quickly got away from that, and I kind of went into a phase from twenty-two to about twenty-four, where I was straight but a little confused. And then by two curious. years ago, hmm. yeah, I would say, yeah, definitely by curious. And then I would say about two years ago, I kind of just said, you know what, these, these feelings have not gone away. They're not going away. I need to just accept who I am. At which point I said, you know, what? I'll, I consider myself either bisexual or queer mm-hmm. and bisexual didn't it didn't feel like a proper fit because bisexual is just, it's, it implies, you know, there's just two genders, male, female, all that. And I feel like sexuality, gender identity, these things are so much more fluid than that. And I don't want to restrict myself in how I define myself. So I, I kind of came to the terms that I'm not bisexual, I'm pansexual because there's a lot out there and quite frankly, I don't consider any of it uh, restricting factors for when it comes to who I would interact with. Okay. 
So I wanted to highlight something specific that you said because I did have an episode uh, about bisexuality. So you guys refer back to episode 29 for that. And a key distinction, I think, between bisexuality and pansexuality is your take or maybe your experience on the gender. So my guest on that episode said, I consider myself bisexual because I have not experienced anything outside of the two genders. And you are saying... I won't say the opposite, but you're saying I consider all the genders, so that makes me more pansexual. So, what was the process like coming to this conclusion? It was a lot of just a lot of introspection, just you know, thinking about what I like, what I don't like, um, you know, just like taking my taking my pride out of it because you know there's. It, there's always been this ridiculous stigma about, you know, if you're a guy and you like the company of guys, then you're gay or or you're less of a man or what all that, all that bullshit. You know? Right, right. So I, I really just had to put all of that aside because, you know, I've never personally, I've, I've never judged anyone for their sexuality, but there was a period where I heavily judged myself for feeling like, for feeling the way I felt. And so, yeah, it was a bit over two years ago where I just kind of reached the point where I was like, it's enough with this. I just need to let all this shit go and and just live my life because it's kind of blocking me from being the best person I can be. All right. That's awesome. So what kind of misconceptions have you encountered during this uh, reawakening, I'll call it, I would say, honestly, my my dating life is pretty is pretty quiet. I would say my personal nature, I'm not very transparent about my sexuality. Like I'll, I'll bring it up if asked directly, but I don't. You know, it's not something I open conversations with or anything like that. And right. it's not so much because I'm being secretive. It's just because I don't think it should matter. Like, I think your sexuality is for you to reconcile and, you know, for you to define and work with. And what I think on that does not matter. All right. Fair enough. So uh, one thing that pops into mind about it, because I feel like maybe some people who are familiar with this term might have some of the same thought processes as they do with bisexuality. So. In any discussions that you've had about being pansexual or just pansexuality in general, do you find that or have you found that people kind of take a you're just being greedy or you don't know what you like or you're just confused mindset to it? Or is it pretty straightforward as a this is what it is and that's all there is to it doesn't need to be discussed further? I would say it's it's generally just this is what it is um, because really out of all of my all of my close friends and all I have the my dating standards are by far the most stringent so <laughs> come um, on standards yeah um, so yeah and that's like especially and some of my my straight friends kind of take exception to that because they're like well you know you should be dating more people and I'm like I don't I, I I'm not doing all of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but yeah, it's like um, my my standards are. I, I have very high standards for my for myself and for what I seek in a mate. So, really, my pansexuality doesn't. It honestly doesn't help me when it comes to dating because it's still, you know, some people have a dating pool. I have, I have a wet teaspoon. <laughs> okay. So that's 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 pretty much what that's what that's been like. Okay. Um so you kind of touched on another question, but now I'm curious about <clears throat> excuse me, about what makes your your pool so small. Is that a I'm assuming it's not physical given, you know, everything that we've already talked about. So is it more of a lifestyle conflict is it you know you're looking for specific emotional or mental type of qualities like what makes your 
What makes you so picky? I would say, well, honestly, my this is this would be part of this would be my spirituality playing a factor even before I knew what it was. But you know, with in order for me to comfortably date someone, there has to you know I have to have that that level of resonance with them. Like I have to I have to feel comfortable with them. I have to feel a level of connection. Uh, you know, we have to be able to, to enjoy conversation and you know all kinds of things um, with our clothes on too. And so, you know, if, if I don't have that in a person, then I don't, like, I'll, I'll dead it right away. And it's generally something that I can't always tell until I meet someone. But when I do, I know whether or not it's there right away. Got it. So that's, that's one thing. And then I'm also, personally, I'm, an, I'm a very introverted person, very laid back. And... I'm very peaceful, and I don't I don't like drama and shit. So, you know, I, I don't want to deal with someone who's 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 into that. I don't do the whole appearances thing, and being someone who liaises with with gay men a lot, I've noticed that that's a pretty that's a bit of a problematic thing. But I guess but more on that another time. Right. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me. Like I like people who are comfortable with themselves. I would say laid back, approachable, um, transparent, and you know you just you just gotta feel that oomph with someone. And I don't I don't feel that with a lot of people. There's very few people that I I feel that with. Okay, so what I'm taking from that is you. I don't want to say date maybe you interact with a purpose and it's more than just a we're getting together or we're interacting or we're meeting or we're speaking just to be doing so or just to be a seat filler it's it there has to be some meaning and chemistry is very important so i'm 100 percent there with you you can't force chemistry now some people in my experience and by my experience i mean me can forego chemistry if there is an end goal i guess but as far as wanting to actually make a connection with someone chemistry is very important and i'm not just talking about whether or not you think he or she or whatever they whatever their pronouns is that they're fine but that you can actually sit and talk to this person you know you can go to brunch with this person and you're not just sitting there staring at your phone or staring at the at the glass of water trying to find some dirt or something like that. It's, it's, it's very important. So I, I get it. And yeah, you, yeah there, has, there has to be something there. I mean, like even I've, I've kind of reached the point. Um, I, 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 you know, like I had my whole phase and now <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, <laughs> uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not like, me because I, I'm non-practicing, but y'all, I don't judge y'all though. I'm oh, I'm also saved and sanctified myself. So um, see, we're not gonna do that. But because <laughs> I know that's a lie. <laughs> um, but for the most part, like it, it, what you what you said about you know interacting with a purpose. That's really the word right there because like I I just have to there has to be some sort of chemistry, some sort of connection. Like you know even if I'm if I'm just gonna just like hook up with someone, I still need to you know I still need to feel something. Because I'm I'm a I'm a pretty emotional like I, my emotions show in everything I do and if I can't feel any type of emotion for someone then it's just not going to work. Right. Well, can we just segue? Just not even segue. That's the wrong word. Can we? Can we just go on a small tangent about needing chemistry, even if it's just a hookup? Now I'm going to speak from my intersection and my sphere, but. Gay men, when y'all are hopping on these apps or wherever you go, you know, to find some sexual organs that you agree with. Not everybody is one of those. I'm ready to be plowed or I'm whatever the case may be. I don't need to get into the specifics, but a lot of y'all, you take the element of chemistry out of it. And I'm, I'm confused as to how that works. Like I get hit up by guys and it's like, I want to do this, this and this. And, you know, I want to 
suck whipped cream off your dick and, and bend you over and do the, and I'm like, okay, but I don't even know how you look. So I'm confused about how this is going to work because there's even chemistry amongst words in how in mediums be it text be it you know if you're on the apps it's still text texting back and forth there's still chemistry there so um and that's a word right there number um, one the approach makes a huge difference because not everybody wants to be approached like that i get it y'all feel like y'all don't have enough hours in the day and you know the sexual fairies are going to lock your genitals up if you don't get straight to it i get that however there's still a standard of chemistry because more than likely, if I don't like the chemistry that we have in words, even if it's just the quick, are you down? Yes or no. Then that chemistry more than likely is not going to, it's not going to erupt from nowhere. If we happen to meet and more than likely, if let me rephrase the black ass bottom line is if we don't have chemistry, in our initial contact, then it's not going to go forward. And I, I, in my experience, a lot of guys don't understand that it's I'm here for a specific purpose and everybody should be here for the same purpose that I am. And you're the odd apple. If you are not receptive to the way that I choose to approach you. And I'm not saying that uh, I'm saved and sanctified because I don't need none of my friends coming and coming for my edges in my week. However, we fall down, but we get up. Listen, and I mean, and I get it. Sometimes we want to fall down on top of somebody, but exactly. Just keep in mind that there's still an element of chemistry and, and compatibility that goes into that. It's not just solely. Are you, willing to be bent over and am I willing to you know do what whatever I need to do because I don't know how y'all get down I'm sure y'all out here swinging from chandeliers and you know wrapping who, yourselves who, who up told you, who told you about my Thursday night listen listen I saw something that kept popping up I don't know what I was looking at and there was a man with like one of those uh one of those like gas masks on his face and then his whole body was wrapped up in saran wrap and I just you know I didn't even have questions I was just left confused but whatever your kink is personally I feel like that's a whole lot of saran wrap to be wasting like you don't know how much chicken you could have wrapped up for a later date with all that but you know whatever floats your boat and find your lost remote Uh, so let's get back on track but before we do, actually, I just, you know, I, I really want to echo your sentiments there. Yeah, and I, I agree with you totally because it's, it's, you know, it's not just that, but it's like, you know, certain people just can't get away with doing some of this shit. Like, um, you know, like I can't even tr- keep count of how many times I've gotten messages from nameless, faceless profiles where it's just like uh, an asshole and <laughs> the, 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 the just are you looking and i'm like well, what the fuck is i don't know how old you are i don't know what you look like mm. like i mean yeah sometimes i do like I, I i do enjoy someone taking a nice seat on my face here and there but um i need to know what their actual face looks like before you start using mine as a chair like you know it's you know just show some show some some show some courtesy right and it's funny and, go ahead and and um, a lot of these motherfuckers need to learn how to read profiles. Ooh, okay, you you beat me to it because I was just about to say the same thing. If, if I had a dollar for every time someone sent me a message totally disregarding the criteria I set in any profile I'm using, I I could retire. I'm sick of this shit. Same. Man. Case in point, I have on my profile. Now, I understand some of y'all like to rewrite the Bible in your profiles. I'm not reading all that shit. Get to the point. Keep it concise. However, mine is very short. And in the profile, it says, I am not going to respond if you do not have a face picture. I am not looking for sex. I'm not looking for a hookup. Never say never. However, at this point, in this juncture, I'm not. What do I get? Faceless profiles. Um, messages saying, I mean, 
are you trying to have a big dick nutting you or not? And I'm like, sir, where on this profile did you think that that is what I'm looking for? When it clearly says I'm not looking for sex. And mm-hmm. I had someone get upset with me. Well, I've had multiple people get upset with me because they're like, oh, I thought you was looking for conversation, but you're not going to respond. And it says on the profile because you're calling yourself at this point. I'm thinking that you're lit. You're you are labeling yourself as a conversationalist. So you're upset because I'm not responding to your message talking about, oh, I thought you were looking for conversation. But number one, your approach was whack because it's usually something like, oh, hey, daddy, how you doing or something like that off top. I know that we are our interests are not aligned. But number two, you immediately hit me up or you you're saying something sexual or if I look at your profile and it's clear that you are looking for something sexual cuz you probably have on your profile, I'm not here for a lot of back and forth blah 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 blah. Anyway, I say all that to say, read the profiles of the people that you're hitting up. Sometimes you'll see red flags and sometimes you'll see something that says, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't message this person because we are, you know, we're not on the same page and that's okay. I don't know what it is with, with men where it's like, I have to shoot my shot with as many people as possible. Some of y'all, cause some, we can, we can get into a long conversation about this and that's something to revisit on another episode but just to go back to what you were saying read the profiles of the people you're hitting up you know exactly and and it's especially and you know if you can't read then maybe you need to get your ass off this app and go take care of that because (laughs) i'm i'm not your i'm not your tutor you my rates are a little too high for you Mm. uh like for for me for example like don't if you know, like when I say on my profile that I like people under the age of 35 and that I am a top, do not send me messages um, with your dick out and you're 40 and you're, you know, like, and you're asking me for ass pics and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, are you literate? What's what's going on here? Like, what's really good? What's really hood right now? Yeah. It's funny how guys tend to disregard other people's criteria for things, but they feel like theirs is is law and, you know, chiseled in concrete like one of the Ten Commandments. It's funny to your boy. I understand what you're saying completely. Especially in my experience, um, the older white gays, but I think we can have that conversation at another time Listen, as well. Because I'm old. Mm-mm. You know what? You're right. We're going to get back on track right now because we're airing grievances. This is not a Tales by the Jack side episode. Although now that I know you have some of those, that'll oh, be something for later. <laughs> I, we, I, we could do a trilogy off the bullshit I've dealt with. <laughs> I'm sure. All right. So we've talked about um, the misconceptions and your process of coming to the conclusion of being pansexual. Um, you pretty much stated your dating criteria and how that affects you. Cause I was going to ask you if you had any issues. Um, but it sounds like you curate your, you uh, curate, you curate your dating pool very meticulously. So, yeah, you know, that's a, I'm a Virgo. Virgo's got to do Virgo shit. All right. All right. I don't know much about algebra, but sure. So what have your interactions been like with other individuals within the community? So do you experience the you're just gay rhetoric or, you know, kind of some similar to what bisexual men encounter or is it pretty straightforward? The reason why I ask this question is because and I've touched on this before that the community itself can be very phobic. So you have gay men that are homophobic, you have lesbians that are homophobic, you have gays that are transphobic, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm wondering if you've had any experiences like that within the community. Well, I'm fortunate that I haven't. Mm -hmm. And I think it actually goes back to like how I am, you know, as you you say, curing my various schools, um, because I, I only really... I only really vibe with um, especially progressive people. So I, I really don't deal with that. But I'm also like, I feel like in the event of, you know, if somebody wants to come up and say something like, well, you're just gay. And then, then I, I feel the need to remind them that 
hey, um, if your homegirl is attractive enough, I fuck her too. So, <laughs> so where does that where does that leave us? <laughs> Just lay it out there, okay? <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm pretty much, you know, life is life is short. I like to move with a meaning, and and I'm really all about that action. So, I mean, you can you can you can hear my words. It's now, or you can feel them later. So, all right. Shit. Oof. All right. Um. So that's all I have for this topic. I mean, I'm sure there's tons of other questions out there. And if you guys have any questions about Pensac, uh, if I could speak, that would be great. If you have any questions about pansexuality, go ahead and tweet those. Maybe we'll do a part two or some kind of corresponding thing. So. Let's get into the queer query. Uh, I don't have much here, so we should be good and we should be able to get through this pretty quickly. So, first question: What black '90s sitcom son were you growing up? I was thinking about this earlier. I I was TJ from Smart Guy. Oh, um, that's a good one. I, I was. You know, I'm 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 a pretty intelligent person, and I also I never quite got along very well with my peers because I was used to the company. Uh, I was used to to being around adults a lot, right. so um, I had the intelligence thing going. I was always, you know, I was always looking for a challenge. I was like being challenged, and then I just kind of never really got along very well with people in my age group. Like um, one of my my best friends now we went to middle school together and one of the things he said was that you know you were always very mature and when when you're like 11 and 12 years old you don't know how to handle someone your age with that much maturity so that's that was me okay um hmm. i don't know if i had any one sitcom son that I really identify with. I guess the closest would probably be um, it probably would be TJ from the Smart Guy just because, you know, I was intelligent and I like to be left alone. Um, and I like to come to things on my own time, you know. It's just like, oh, you should be doing this because you're a boy. And it's like, mm. you know, my stepdad was real big about me playing football and I didn't want to. And then when I was in middle school, I was like, okay, I'm, you know, I want to play because I choose to instead of it being, you know, forced on me, which they didn't. I mean, you know, my stepdad was adamant about it, but they didn't force me. So I guess that would probably be the closest. All right. I get that. Uh, all right. So what act would you, would you book for the next Super Bowl halftime show? Beyonce. Same. And. <laughs> And I, I have to one of the one of the reasons why um I would I would book her without a second thought is because I was very tickled at the the at the last the last um, time she did a half show half time show. Um shit, I mean vocabulary, I need to remember how to use it. Uh <laughs> but yeah, at the at the time my my, my boyfriend at the time because I'm we broke up and shit. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so his he had his he, his friends were visiting from from California, and, and none of them called the Super Bowl the Super Bowl. They just called it the Beyonce Show, and then all this other shit. And I found that hilarious. Yeah, they're like, yeah, they're like, so so what time's the Beyonce Show? And I'm like, you know, there's an actual football <laughs> game around it, and they're like, but what time is the Be but what time is the Beyonce Show? Is what we're asking here, and that. <laughs> Give us the answers we deserve. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I agree. Um, you know, beyond just her giving a good show, I would be curious to see who she brings out. Because it's, it's become a, a tradition that when you do the halftime show that you have at least one other act come out as kind of a complimentary. We did this song together or whatever the case may be. So I would be very curious to see who she brings out because I don't think it would be another Destiny's Child reunion so then that leaves the question who would it be you know is she going to bring Alicia Keys so they can give us a, a put it in a love song 
little number since we never got a video. You know, she's going to bring Jay up there to do their hits and get the crowd rocking. Is it going to be somebody unsuspecting that we wouldn't have even considered Beyonce to be musically inclined to vibe with? You never know with her. You never know. So I would be very curious about that. I would just hope but it's not Alicia Keys because ever since she she married um, Toucan Sam, her voice went right down the drain. Well, you know, karma is a thing, and karma is petty. So, good luck to well, them. The the, 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 the the fucked up thing about it is because um, people like to like to put the blame on Alicia for for stealing that that long nose nigga, and in the reality, he was stepping out on his wife long before they got together that's fair however i feel like his karma is that he looks the way that he does so you know he does and um i think also ever since maybe maybe she stopped eating pussy or something because okay <clears throat> allegedly <laughs> Alle- of, course, of course allegedly allegedly. <laughs> allegedly when she stopped to me when she stopped rocking the braids her voice was like all right girl well that's all we have for you yeah, because she she definitely has something keeping those uh, those those vocal cords um, awesome. moist and 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 um, nourished, and it's well, gone now. Yeah, I mean, although to be fair, her voice started dialing it in shit before she even got out of the diary era, because that uh, unplugged those vocals. I was like, oh, sweetie. I, I would have unplugged my stereo. Sweetie. I mean, and I jammed to it because some of it is good. And she does have that one uh, male backup singer that I'm not. I mean, I get why he's there, but maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm petty because I'm thinking if I'm the main act, I'm not going to have no background singers up here out singing me. That's just not what my life is about. And they did Diary. And y'all know exactly what song I'm talking about, what performance I'm talking about from the Unplugged album and uh, DVD, where he had her sounding like she was five, like a five-year-old just got out the bath singing, you know, because she wanted Twinkie. And I was just thinking to myself, Alicia, why would you do this to yourself? And then Adam Levine came was like, doesn't she sound perfect? And I was like, white man, what we're not going to do is spread lies. We are not doing that today. Anyway, you never know, though. But I, yeah, I, I see what you mean about Alicia. I mean, but you never know. Yeah. My point was that you never know with Beyonce. Maybe she'll have Chloe and Holly up there doing some kind of psychedelic, you know, vocal. Yeah, she looks, yeah she, she's good for keeping it interesting. Yeah. I I would personally love if part of part of me would love to see her and and Mary J on stage with the with the I'm fed up with this nigga music mm. just just jamming for a minute. Okay. Cause I, you you know you know Mary is hot right now. Oh yeah, in multiple ways, and all that jumping around and and dancing that she doing like she did it back in the nineties. I'm like, get your cardio up. That's how you do it. Mary J. She she dances. I love her, but she dances like like she's standing in front of the cigarette machine and she's waiting for a pack of cools to drop. Mary J. She Blige just, dances like she just sat on an ant bed. She does. She, she does. does. Like she like she just sat on an ant bed and she was wearing her granny's heels. Yeah. Like, you know, she just she mm. anyway, off topic again, tangent. Okay, last question. This is a personal question. What is or was your top porn search category? What does my Vidster Sorry, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, I was gonna say what does your my Vidster say about you? Um, well, I, I admittedly do like my rice, so that's one category. Did you? Mm. Yeah, I, I did that. Mm. Um, I, I have to be honest here. Also, but like what, what really dominates is honestly amateur porn. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not very, I'm not very big on whatever talent there is out there, Let's but see. yeah, amateur Amateur porn and also dream pie porn. Yeah. Mm, okay. 
Yeah, let your, um, little, let your little freak flag fly, why don't you? I I don't so much consider it a kink at this point as I do a near requirement. I'm I'm admittedly all about shooting up the club. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> you guys make sure you shoot your shot, but only if you're in the cream pie and you know chemistry. Wow. And you know can con can converse on a good level, then you know you'll get your club shot up. Love in the club. Uh, for me, what is my top? I don't know. I'm all over the place. Um, let's see. Let me tell all my damn business. But that's fine because you know, y'all know that I'm a non-practicing. So, uh, let's see. One of them is double P. Um, I had a, it probably would consider be uh, still be considered a top search just because of the recent things that I, although I haven't looked for a while, but there was a time when I was kind of ups, low key obsessed with like cuckold porn. Um, I think I just woke up one day and I was like, I want to see white men get humiliated and <laughs> I was just thinking that, like, you mean you can, I mean, I can get my rocks off and I can watch somebody make this white man feel like shit? Yeah. Where's the link? And usually the, the black guys that they choose for those are A1. Um, and then amateur. I've been getting more into amateur for the past couple of years because I'm not, I'm not crazy about, like you said, the talent that the studios have been choosing. I'm not crazy about, you know, physically for the most part. Uh, and then the other thing is when they're big names like that, because of the internet making people more accessible, then you you start finding out more about them as a person, and you're like, ugh, gross. I can't even, you know, whack it to you no more because you trash in person. Looking at you, Antonio Biagi. Well, so yeah, for, I I just it goes back to just chemistry again it's, it's just very important for me mm-hmm. in, in everything because like when you can tell when you know when, when it's like professional porn that there's there's no chemistry and yeah, usually there like when you see chemistry amongst like two porn stars it's rare and you're like wow they actually like each other or you know exchanged a few words before they started filming for 12 hours to get this 20 minute scene done but a lot of times it's just like I mean, it's it dry. It is dry, <laughs> and honest. And like I was watching a porn with like where they actually tried to to make it like something more than it was, and the the script the, the script was not very good. Like the the dialogue sucks. And when is the, it ever? I mean, and it bad dialogue offends me on a spiritual level because I'm a writer and I take, I especially take great pride in writing quality dialogue. So when you're going to come at me with this dried up bullshit and I'm supposed to keep an erection through this, this is hell no, man. This, this, just get to the fucking man. <laughs> All right. Let me find out you out here writing porn uh, dialogue. I'm going to look for I, you. Well, Hey, like, I if, know him. I mean, if, if if somebody wants to wants to run me my coin, I'll, I'll write it. Shit, I got bills to pay. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I guess my other thing is I just kind of scroll Tumblr. So I get to see. It's kind of like the best of both worlds because it's amateur clips and there's not much dialogue because they can't fit that much of the video onto the site. And we just get right to it, you know. And I, you see some of everything. You see a lot of... Um, I think another top one would probably be like Friendly Fire. Because I like mm, scenarios where there's, you know, multiple people and it's not a, I'm not on a gay shit, but we're going to fuck this girl together and put ourselves in odd positions and twist like a motherfucking pretzel so we make sure we don't touch. I don't have time for that. I like it when it's fluid and the guys, you know, I mean, even if they are not into each other like that, if they just don't mind brushing elbows and shit like that 
without it looking weird and it's an, an odd edit right there where they may have had some kind of issue right right now I, I get what you mean like it, it needs to it, it has to flow yeah 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 I don't know how it doesn't like for you guys out there that don't that have a problem with even touching another man I don't know how y'all out here having threesomes and all this kind of stuff with one woman they just I feel like I feel like most of them can't fuck oops that's just that's just the theory I have I'm not interested in verifying it either way yeah I feel like it's probably just a lot of spit roasting which to me sounds like it would get old very quickly come on and catch your man out there in those New York streets listen these motherfuckers I wasn't just talking about them oh but yeah (laughs) yeah those those motherfuckers too so I think we've uh, delved enough into our personal business so with that being said you guys this is going to wrap up another episode of Gay Side Stories so Side Eye why don't you tell people where they can find you well I am pretty much on Twitter all the time so it's Side Eye Special all one word no hyphens or semicolons or hashtags or anything like that Uh, my for anyone who's interested in catching any of my tarot spreads I do have all of those under the hashtag red ink tarot and again that's all one word of course Mm -hmm. and I will actually the Sunday I will actually be putting one up this evening so see what's see what's popping in these spiritual streets all right Shout out to you. All right, you guys. Remember, GaySideStories.com is the hub for more information. If you want to email me about anything, it's GaySideStories at gmail.com. Follow and interact on social media. Like the Facebook page. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts if you haven't already. Leave a rating on iTunes if you so please. I would appreciate it very much. And, of course, make sure you guys are sharing this podcast with others. Check out the Sounds of the Stories playlist. And thank you for listening. Uh, like I said last week, you guys don't have to. And you, you come through every week listening and giving great feedback and ideas for other shows. And I think it goes without saying, but thou shall protect thy walls. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.